Hello and welcome to this video in which I'm making a follow up tutorial uh, for making my interactive style outro videos only in this video I'm going to make it within Camtasia Studio 8. Now in my previous video I made this tutorial using Sony Vegas and I mentioned within that video that you could also make it within Camtasia. Now I've had questions on my blog and people sort of sending me messages on Facebook asking me how you could do it in Camtasia. So I'm going to make this tutorial showing you exactly how to do that. Now before we begin, uh, I want to stress that you have to have Camtasia Studio version 8 and upwards. It won't work with any previous versions, but apart from that, if you have Camtasia Studio 8, you're good to go with this. Now if you've seen my interactive outros, you'll have seen it gets to the tail end of the video and then it sort of animates where the main video goes smaller and there's four smaller videos appear below that and on YouTube they are clickable links that can drive traffic from any video at the tail end of any video across to those specific videos. What I do in the editing software is I position these four smaller videos over the top of the, you know, the template and the main video. And then whenever I upload them into YouTube, I take advantage of the annotation feature that allows people to click these links and take them to that specific video. Now, what I'm going to do in this particular tutorial is show you how I create this within uh, Camtasia Studio, just the same way that I do it in Sony Vegas. Now, within the clip bin, what we're going to need is we are going to need my template, which is the background. And you'll see that it's actually an image, but you'll see that as we progress through the video. I then need the video files that I'm going to use and the way I work with it is I have the main video file and then I pop up four other video files. So I need five video files in total within the clip bin and also my template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop them into this white area which is the clip bin. Now you can go to file and import media but you can also just drag and drop stuff in. So I'm going to go and I'm going to grab the five files that I need and I'm also going to grab the image file that I need. Okay, so I now have all of the elements in place that I need to obviously go ahead and make this interactive outro. Now the first thing that I need to bear in mind is the order that I load my clips in because it works a bit like Photoshop. So track one goes to the bottom, then track two will stack on top of that, then three on top of that and so forth. So what I want to do is I want to add in my image file first and place this into track 1. So now I've dragged it down into the timeline I obviously want to choose 16.9 and insert my image into track 1. Of course I can drag out the length of the image file to suit my needs. Then what I need to do is I need to pick my next video and drop this in. Now generally I would advise this to be the main video, the actual video that you're presenting that you're going to place the interactive outro onto the tail end. Generally what I'll do is I'll drag that track down into track 2 and let it go. Of course you're going to have a certain element of the video portion before the interactive outro actually begins to happen. So you'll have your normal video playing and then the outro begins to happen. And what you want to do is at the point where your outro begins to happen, you want to select that track and hit S for split. You want to split the track. What I'm also going to do here is I'm going to shorten this track because obviously we're only doing this as an example. So you see here you have your main video track and the first portion is just going to play as normal. It'll be a normal video and you know the, the video size will be normal but when you get to the second part which is your interactive element what you then want to do is minimize the actual size of that video. Now to do that as you see what I've done uh, you'll see dots appearing in the corners of the Camtasia Studio, all you simply do is grab the corner and drag it up and in. Resize the video to what size you want and position it in the image where you want. Additionally you'll see that it's now not the dominant image and you can see the image file that's below that. That's really it, so what will happen is Camtasia Studio will play as normal at that point and then it will animate and drop up to the top portion once you get past the point of the split. What you then need to do is drop in all of the four other tracks and as you drop each one in the place you'll notice that they then become the dominant video and you can't actually see through them. Again what you've got to do is drag the corners up, resize the video and put this into position. 
basically it's a matter of playing about with this, dropping each of the tracks into place that suits you and setting this up until you're happy with them. Say I'm happy with that, I'll resize the tail end of the video because we don't want all of the video. Now there's one other point that I want to mention and that is to do with the video audio for each of the other tracks. All of these smaller videos you don't need the audio, you only want to keep the audio for the first video track or for the main video track. The rest of the tracks you want to mute the audio so you right click on the track and you select edit audio. Then what you can do is literally drag the green line down to zero so that be you mute the audio in this particular track. So it's a matter of just basically adding in the next video which is going to be video number three but it's going to be the second interactive video. We'll drop that into place. I'll just remove the tail end because we don't need it. Again what we want to do is put our playhead over it so we can see the video. Uh, we'll resize the video and drag it down and into position. Once I'm happy with the video position I'm going to right click, edit audio again and lower the audio on this file. Another great thing about uh, Camtasia Studio 8 is whenever you're actually aligning things you'll see that these guidelines start to appear and you'll see with the fact that I have three guidelines appearing that the top of the video, the bottom of the video and the middle of all three videos is aligned. This lets you know that your video is sitting perfectly aligned within the actual template. Once I'm happy with the position of the final video, again I need to mute the audio, so I'll go to edit audio, that's right click and select edit audio. Then I want to drag the green bar down to zero and that removes the audio. The only audio I should have left is for this particular video here, which is the main video. These audios are now removed and the videos themselves will play and once I render this out and then upload this into YouTube, I can then make the interactive element. So that's us ready now to render this video out and one of the very first things that I advise anybody to do when they're working in Camtasia Studio is always come up, file and save your project before you do any rendering because in the past I have seen Camtasia Studio crashing on me and if you at least take the time to do the save, if it crashes it's easier to recover your work. So save your project first and then that way you'll, you'll basically be protecting yourself should there be something go wrong with the software. Once you're happy with that then it's a matter of going through produce and share your video and render this out. Once you upload it into YouTube it's a matter of adding your interactive callouts to the tail end and we're going to do that now. So once you actually upload your video into YouTube and you're within your video manager what you can do is you can click the downward arrow here and select annotations. I'll just pause that. You'll see here I actually have the annotations already loaded in. Um, what we'll do is we'll come forward to this point in the video and uh, we'll look at the annotations. So we've now jumped forward in time to the tail end of the video where we want this sort of interactive elements to appear or where they do appear within the video. What we want to do now is make these all clickable links and it's quite easy to do. What you want to do is select add annotation and select spotlight. Once you have this then you can literally drag the square to wherever you want and if we put it over the top you'll see you place it over the top of the video you select your color size and then you also select the time you want it to start and end. The next thing you need to do is select link and you're linking to a video so you need to go and get the video URL of each one of these. So as you can see this is actually this video here and I've added in the YouTube video URL that I'm linking this video to. I've chosen a red outline to display around the video so if people sort of hover over it they can see the red, they know it's a clickable link. And I've done this in the case for all four videos and additionally I've also added in a subscribe option. I've used the same call out except I've used a yellow outline for it and I give the option for people to subscribe to my channel by clicking this link. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you can see yourself using uh, interactive elements like this and literally getting creative with the tools that you have at hand, your own ideas and using the likes of these annotations within YouTube. 
This gives you the option to become interactive. It gives you the option to get people to do more than just watch your video and then leave. And adding these in to your videos will increase your views. It will increase your traffic. It should grow your subscriber base. And you're standing out from the crowd basically because you're doing something completely different or you're doing something that not a lot of other marketers are doing. So that's it for today's video. Of course what you should be doing now is clicking one of the links directly below this video and going off and viewing another one of my helpful tips. My name's Chris Cole from IamChrisCole.com. Thanks a lot for watching. Please also remember to subscribe to my channel and if you do have any questions please drop them into the comments area.